Hello guys and welcome to today's STPL. Uh, once again, it's a Friday stream, so we're going to have two of the series today other than the ones we've had on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, this is due to the fact that White Clan did drop out the tournament, uh, which means we have one less series each week. Uh, we do have two less series, no, three less series from last season, but last season there was basically two dead teams, so the fact that they left is probably a good thing. Uh, we have the same format as last time though, best of five, all the games are played, uh, lineups are selected in advance, and all the games are played at the same time, which means regardless of the outcome of the series, we will see four games, uh, because every single game counts towards the final score uh, at the end of the season. And then we do have set five, which is going to be the ace match, uh, if we get two and two. We've not had an ace match so far this week. Could today be the day we finally get to see one? Uh, it could be called the map pool. Overall, we've got Hitchhiker, Monty Hall, Essie, Core Breach, Tripod, Andromeda, Byzantium 3, Fancy 2, and the Mancha. And to be fair, we've had quite a lot of good matches here so far. So let's have a look at the team. Starting us off here is going to be red. We actually have the replays for this this week, or the, today, so that's a lot better. Uh, so far, Red have been doing okay this season. They are two for two, uh, winning one of the only series they played. They did actually lose against White Clan, but that was retroactively changed into a a, a walkover, essentially, um, given the fact that White Clan left. All time, they're actually doing pretty well as well, and they're actually head to head against Ash, completely even. So. Red are kind of the 50% team right now because they're so close to being completely neck and neck on everything. Uh, we're going to have LML, Eridor, Blue Green, and Talent from them. And all of them are really fun to watch, so looking forward to this one. Their opponents on the other side are going to be Ash. Now, Ash, uh, they do have a couple of newer players. I still haven't got Patak's um, flag in there, but hopefully that's not too much of a big deal. Desarque, if I remember correctly, is from the Czech Republic. But I can't remember that flag, and I know I put it in and I've got no idea. So I guess we'll find out when we get to his thing. Hopefully, I think it says it somewhere. Uh, but basically, we've got Dreamer, hit him up, Desarque, and Patak. Now, unlike, uh, unlike Red, Ash's score is a lot more skewed overall. Oh, Croatia, sorry, not the Czech Republic. It is Croatia. Uh, but Ash started off in the STPL very weak. Their roster wasn't very active at all. Oh, Patak is Croatia. Okay, my bad. Well, that's not too much of a big deal. We'll sort that out afterwards. Someone at the end of the stream just messaged me to remind me, and then uh, then I'll do it. If you've got me on Discord, just message me on there. Uh, but head-to-head, -head, as I said, they're one-to-one, -one, and Ash are actually three-for-three three so far this season. That's including their walkover against White Clan. So they're doing pretty well for themselves, and they barely missed out on the playoffs in Season 3, so... No, we are in Season 3, in Season 2, so they're going to be looking to try and make it to the playoffs this time. Let's have a look at the matchups we're going to have. We're going to have a PvP, a ZVT, a TVP, and a PvZ, so we've got a lot of good games coming up in this series. We're starting off with a PvP because, of course, we are. It can't be a game between a foreign team without a PvP. Uh, 
foreign teams have a lot of Protoss players on them, so it's very highly likely you'll end up with at least one PvP, especially when you look at Red's roster, uh, given the fact they have a lot of Protoss players in general anyway. So, kind of cool. Uh, PvP isn't too bad. LML and Dreamer both are very good players. Uh, LML, uh, let's actually introduce him quickly. He's actually 75% win rate over Protoss, but that is over four games. Overall, he's still got a positive win rate with 57, which is very, very respectable. Now, his last PvP he actually did lose, that was the Gosu Dark, and that was a very weird game, so not sure how that's going to play into this one. But let's have a look at his opponent. It's going to be Dreamer. Dreamer, bang on the money with his PvP at a 7 win, 7 loss ratio. 46% uh, win rate overall is pretty damn good as well, very close to 50%. So nothing to really hate there. Now in his last game, he actually lost against Cruzago. So both of these players losing to EF in PvPs. So they're going to have a chance to redeem themselves in this one. LML in chat saying he's very bad. So I don't know. I don't believe that. That's not true whatsoever. But let's have a look at the map they're going into. This is very close to something like Gladiator. This was the first map that really popularized the use of low ground mains, high ground naturals. It does mean in PvP, uh, you can have really weird situations. Dreamer actually played on this map before and he did win. Uh, he beat Pre in a 33 minute PvP, which was ridiculous. Uh, I don't think we'll probably see that again. I don't think we're gonna get a 33 minute game here, but you never know. Both these players are pretty damn good. So seeing them against each other should be a lot of fun as we get into game number one. Okay, the game has begun, and up here, in the top left, it's Dreamer in the green. No, it's LML in the peach. <laughs> We're starting off well, starting off strong, that's what we believe. And his opponent starting us off in the top right, in the green, it's Dreamer fighting for Ash. Okay, so both these players, I would say out of all the Protoss players on each of their respective teams, are probably the strongest. LML, one of the strongest players on red. I think in my preview of all the teams, I actually wrote LML as, uh, as their star player, along with Ariador. But Dreamer, he's a pretty damn good Protoss player. Did used to play for MSJ. Uh, in Season 1, but when MSG disbanded, well, I don't think they disbanded, but they left the STPL. He actually joined Ash and has done a pretty good job for them since then, so... Now, both players starting off with a relatively normal build, going into a single gateway, into a gas, although it looks like Dreamer is going to go for two... Two gate, maybe. Nope, wait... I'm looking at the wrong person's minerals here. This doesn't look, make any sense. But no gas yet. No second gateway is a very interesting build. Is he going to expand behind one gate? No, he's just going to go for a late gas. I'm not really sure what the benefit of this is. He does get the zealot a little bit sooner. Dreamer has skipped his zealot for the time being to get a quicker core. But I'm really not sure how you benefit from going for a later gas. Okay, call coming up for both players now. This is the first Zealot popping out. Is Dreamer going to go for a second one? Looks like he's not, so that later gas is definitely even more confusing because he does have the minerals now. I mean, I guess this is going to time out that he'll have enough for speed... Uh, not speed, range and um, a 
Dragoon at the same time, maybe? But I'm not too sure. Okay, so... Looks like the probe has been taken down. No gas being spent as of yet. Oh, he's gonna... There's the goon. But there's no range. There we go. So, I think that was timed out okay. But look at the amount of excess minerals he's got now. That's actually a really big deal in a PvP. He is ahead in workers, which is something that obviously plays into the hands of LML the longer this goes on. Uh, sorry, plays into the hand of Dreamer the longer this goes on. Now, LML looks like he's saving up for something. Is it going to be... Is he going to go for a robo, or is he going to go for an expansion here? Now, going for an expansion, it is going to be a robo. Looks like we've got a second gateway coming in from Dreamer. Uh, which is pretty damn good. Second gateway will allow him to secure this area a little bit faster. Uh, but if he does want to go for an expansion, it will delay it just a little bit. He's actually going to go into a robo behind this. So no expansion for either player just yet anyway. So in a weird way, both players are going for the same build, just at different timings. It's very, very strange, but I guess that shows the difference between these two players, LML. I mean, both of them are playing very defensively. The probe's gonna get in, gonna see there's no Nexus, which is actually a pretty big deal. And he sees the number of gateway units, so he should know the number of gateways that his opponent has. Knows now that it's not three gate, which is super important. And you can already see he's leaving a dra well, he was going to leave a Dragoon there to block the ramp just in case of DTs. But I guess we're not going to see that for now. Now we do have the Observatory coming in here for Dream uh, for LML, so LML is respecting his opportunity's chance of going DTs, and so is Dreamer. Uh, so neither player rushing for Reaver here means we're going to have a probably a pretty long game. Now, LML's looking to push forward here, but this definitely isn't going to be fated to work. Immediately pull him back when he sees the wall of his opponent's, um, opponent's Dragoons. Now, this is definitely an ill-fated attack. He needs to pull back from here. Losing that Dragoon for four, losing the Zealot for free, sorry, is definitely not worth it. Dreamer going to use this opportunity to expand, which is very, very nice for him. There's no, there is a support bay up here, so the Reaver's going to come out a little bit sooner. But we should have Dreamer going for that as well. Just up here, yeah, there we go. Yeah, Dreamer's actually doing pretty well right now. He finds himself five workers ahead. He's actually ahead in units as well, given his second gateway was a little bit faster. And he's kind of got control of this game at the moment. Obviously, he's not using it to put any pressure on. But the Observer going to be coming out here. Needs to be careful. Doesn't want to lose this. Oh, no. He's going to lose the first Observer. That's actually a massive deal. Now, he does see there's no Nexus. So, he is going to move some Dragoons into position to try and block the Shuttle that's going to be heading his way. Uh, but the Shuttle hasn't even been created yet. But that was a very, very nice snipe on the Observer. Going to pull back his Dragoons as well. Uh, maybe fearing something running into his main, but... I mean, everything is looking pretty good for Dreamer still. He did lose the Observer. It's not the biggest deal. It just means your opponent is going to have a little bit of an advantage in terms of vision. You can already see the Observer going to be coming in here. Sees the fact that probes are transferring and will know that there's an expansion up now. Now, LML is sending a probe out down here to the bottom left. I wonder if he plans to hide an expansion. We've already got the Nexus coming up here, which is pretty good. Now, Shuttle Speed is coming in here for, uh, for LML, which means that's going to be a little bit stronger of a Reaver drop when he goes for it. Third Gateway coming in here for Dreamer, which is going to pay off as well. Because he's going to maintain his supply lead. He's actually almost up by 20 supply at the moment. And that really does come back to the fact he got the earlier second gateway. He got the earlier expansion. And he finds himself 8 workers ahead of his... Sorry. 
yeah, eight workers, nine workers now ahead of his opponent. Now looks like NML gonna drop a pylon down here, possibly to scout for hidden bases. Also pretty good to scout for any shuttles trying to go the far, far way around the map. LML able to get his expansion up at a pretty good timing, but it is much, much later than his opponents. You can already see this is down by over 100 minerals, and these have only just started, so... Hella Bacon in chat is asking me to read The Hobbit. Why do you want me to read The Hobbit? Apparently my voice is perfect for hobbitry. Is it because I'm English? Is that why? <laughs> I'm built to read stories because I've got an English voice. Apparently I have dulcet tones. That is the first time anyone has ever said I've got that East London thing. I have not got a strong accent at all. Although it's funny, I found out when I'm talking Japanese, I have like a, not an old person's voice, but it's called like an Osan voice, like Osan koi. And basically it's, it's when my voice is really deep, but I'm two meters tall, so <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Okay, so neither player really doing too much at the moment, just powering up off of their two bases. Dreamer has actually got a t I was about to say the replay isn't bugged, is it? But he is building gateways, so... The fact he's on so many minerals, the fact both of them are on so many minerals is a little bit strange. But, y but buildings are being created, so I don't think it's bugged. Yeah, and they are queuing stuff up. It is a bit strange that the money is going up so high. I must admit, it does look weird, given the fact there's probes just kind of sat out in the middle of nowhere. But I get the feeling it's not bugged. It, it wouldn't make any sense to be bugged. Well, I guess it is bugged. Uh, well. Okay, guys, just one second. We're just gonna back out of the game. <laughs> let's, uh, let's quickly go back here a second. We'll restart the replay. We got to about 10 minutes. I didn't think it was bugged because buildings were being built. Usually if buildings are built, it means it's not bugged. Like, usually when it bugs, you don't see any new buildings built or anything. There was definitely a pylon that was built, so... Yeah, replay's bugging. Like, it just happens to me all the time. I'm not gonna read you The Hobbit. <laughs> I'm just not. I don't even like that book. I don't even read that much, to be honest. I'm not sure I'm really in a position to read a book. My English is terrible. Now, the funny thing... I've gone to the same space... And we're still essentially in the same position, but the minerals are lower. So let's head back into the game, and let's go from there. So, here we go. I've just turned the sound off, haven't I? Yeah, so no one's really doing anything at the moment still. We're still in the position where both are powering up. Uh, but it does look a little bit better. We do have a gas up here, which is something we didn't see before. We've got four gateways here from LML, which is one up on before. We've got a Citadel coming in. Now, the first Reaver drop is actually coming out first. Now, both probes did actually fight each other down here in the bottom right still. So, that did happen. <laughs> Red, blue, green in chat is calling out LML, saying, bugged or just noob. Who knows? <laughs> 
Oh man, that's funny. I like that. Now we've got LML wants to expand, but Dreamer did block this with a pylon, which was also not there before. LML pointing out that he was a Chobo League finalist as well, so... Okay, I missed the one thing that I didn't want to miss, so you know what? You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? We're going to do this. I know I just showed off the thing. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything, because if I did, that would be terrible. I had one job. Here we go, the Reaver's going to draw. Oh my god. Oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Okay, that really wasn't that bad. I didn't really miss too much. He only killed about four probes, I think, so... Yeah, I had one job in this game to, like, pay attention to the minimap for one second, and I failed. It's because nothing was happening before, so... Yeah, the, the one thing that's happened so far, and I, I missed it. Oh man, I'm a good observer, guys. You can siege mode tank recall, I think. But it's very rare because obviously you need to mind control. Well, you need to mind control an SUV or something. There we go. So. Looks like we are going to have Dreamer pushing in. LML doing a pretty good job. There's Storm coming in here from Dreamer. Really helping out with those Reavers. But it looks like LML may just have a little bit too much. But more Storms coming in on the top of the high ground. And LML actually takes an amazing engagement there. I'm really not sure what Dr uh, what Dreamer's plan was to come in here. Uh, but that's definitely not what you want to happen. Dreamer is still got a supply lead though, which is kind of interesting given what just happened. But he does have seven, eight gateways right now against only the four of his opponents. So he is going to be re-maxing incredibly quickly. And now it looks like we do have Dreamer trying to expand towards his opponent, which is very ballsy. Very difficult to do this. I wouldn't really recommend this to anybody. But looks like he's playing with confidence. He knows he has a lot of gateways. He knows he's got a lot of units. And he is going to try and bully his opponent back away from this area. To go and do it. Now the recall, uh, the Reaver did go back in. I don't think it killed anything again. But neither player adding on any additional probes just yet. Now LML, given the fact he's going for a third, needs more probes at this point in the game. And so does Dreamer. Like they really should be building probes. They're remaxing as quick as they can. But yeah, this is definitely not what we want. So we've got a lot of units coming out from Dreamer still. We do have, obviously, the Temporal Archives done. We've got a Forge upgrading armor. There's no second Forge, is there? No. So he's going for 1-1, one, one, uh, which isn't too bad. Let's see if there's any upgrades for LML. No. Now, Dreamer is finding himself completely out of position. This third base was a massive mistake here. There is two cannons. One of them goes down immediately. And look at this. Dreamer is going to be fighting into an awful position against Reavers. And all of his units are getting stuck on this small ramp. I have no idea why his units were so far away and why he tried to expand to that location. But there is a ton of units from Dreamer still. He does get on top of all the Dragoons. There's a lot of Dragoon fire going down on the Zealots. But the Zealots coming in now for LML. Going to really help with this engagement. But it looks like Dreamer is actually slowly starting to break his way through these units. But can he break up the ramp? He actually can. He's got enough units to make it to the high ground here. There's no storm on these High Templar. Well, in fact, there might be, but he's not using it. Uh, maybe he's not got it researched yet, but... Yeah, it's not done. Now, Dreamer may actually just be able to close out the game. He finds himself up. 30 supply. And if he just pushes, it's game over. And there goes the storm on the zealots. Just adding insult to injury here with 40 supply up on his opponent. Dreamer is demolishing his way through into this natural. Even the self storm, not the biggest deal. And with the natural going down with no probes over here at the third base, 
this is going to be the end of the game. LML is going to find himself trapped in his main base. He's pulling his probes, but they are running in to Archons, and that's when you know the game's over. GG, LML taps out, and Dreamer takes game number one. So, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? We are going to go into game number two, uh, but before we do that, uh, let's go to a very quick break, and when I get back, we'll see uh, what game's up next, actually. So, Dreamer won that game. Up next is Ariador versus Hit em Up. It's going to be a TBZ, and it should be a good one. See you guys soon. EPN Season 3. Yeah. STPL DAS. Bio TVP. Wow. No problem. We got dragons to defend. Yeah. STPL DAS. STPL DAS. Mass Scout. Oh, I'm so afraid. We got Hydralis to defend. Yes. STPL. STPL. Fantastic production. Fantastic casters. Fantastic prize pool. Only in STPL. I'm about to overload my aggression inhibitors. Okay guys, welcome back. We're going to be heading into game number two. Now we're going to be heading into Monty Hall SE, but just to introduce our two players here, uh, we're going to start with Red's Eriador. Eriador, a very strong player from Norway. I almost said Denmark. That would have been very, uh, very embarrassing, although I just gave it away. Uh, but if you've watched Foreign Brood War for any period of time, you'll have seen this man. He has been around since the very beginning. One of the grandfathers of Farum Brood War, been playing since release, and just a really, really good player. He's only got, so far, 16 wins, which is why he's on 3 stars, but he's a very good player. He's a 5-star player in our hearts as well. Now, he hasn't had the best of luck in his last 10 games, but he's still got a 48% win ratio overall, so it's pretty damn good. Let's have a look at his opponent. It's going to be the captain and the star player of Ash, also on three stars with 18 wins to his name. Uh, it's Hit Em Up. Hit Em Up is a very, very strong uh, player from Canada. What I think he's the best Canadian Terran by far, and overall just a really, really fun player to watch. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into game number two here on Monty Hall SE. It's Ariador versus Hit Em Up. Okay, starting us off here in the top left hand corner, fighting for red, and we do have a very nice cheerful for him. It's gonna be. Sorry, fighting in the blue as our Zerg player, fighting for red, it's Ariador. And here's that wonderful cheerful. Look at this. Pimpus Please 2003, with his uh, pimp cane and his pimp hat, and him blocking his own goons in his uh, gateways. A little bit unfortunate. But, <laughs> I really like this one. And his opponent spawning down here in the bottom right of Monty Hall SE in the red, fighting for Ash. It's hit him up. Now, I said I wasn't going to show this off again. But I kind of have to. I just got to find it, one second. We need this. 
We need to see this. It's it's in our own interest to see this again. Here we go. I found it. I found it. Let's throw up a cheerful for both players in this situation, given the fact it's only fair. It's hit him up. It's Logan. If you don't, if you don't, <laughs> oh man, I love this so so much. This is such a good cheerful. Uh, apparently the photo. Oh, sorry. In that cheerful, uh, sorry, yeah, in the cheerful, you've blocked their dragoons in, haven't you? It's a different color. That's the problem. Yellow versus orange, they're base colors, right? Base colors in Brood War and in PvP, they're horrible. You blocked in their goons. That is very clever. Yeah, it's the the pimp versus the Wolverine. <laughs> uh, but we've got a twelve hatch coming up from Eriador. We're gonna have hit him up. Well, I thought he was gonna uh, glitch his way through with the um, with the depot, but looks like he is just getting ready to go for a fourteen CC. He's gonna go for a barracks over at this mineral wall as well. Now I imagine that is from when Eriador used to play random and he didn't race pick, so he probably got PVP. Now this is actually 3 hatch before spawning pool by Eriador, which means he is going to have a ton of drones very, very quickly. Now one of these hatcheries is not in a place you would normally put a hatchery in a normal map, uh, but there is the mineral fields here, which by building the hatchery there, you can actually mine them out a little bit more efficiently. Uh, it's probably the most efficient place you can put the third hatchery on this map, unless you take another natural, but that obviously leaves you open to any possible like barracks lifts like we saw uh, Radley do on this map. Now hit him up is going to go for a tech opening here we see from the gas. Now these two players are probably two of the most creative players on their teams. Obviously the Ghost King is the most creative uh, but you can see he's not pulling off of gas so this is likely going to be a two starport wraith behind this although to be fair he does have the command center so we can't really gather that too quickly. Mech is pretty good on this map. There's a lot of gas bases you can take. Uh, but with 3 hatch, bio might be a better option. But obviously you're taking a massive gamble when you go bio. If you push the wrong way, uh, then obviously you'll get killed by Mutilus back in your own base. But we've got hit him up. Going to expand to the mineral wall himself. And he is going to get ready to expand through the, the straight middle. Uh, and actually... Look to push towards the opponent's main up until here. Uh, so it's actually going to be two, uh, two factory here. He's going to go into an, an armory very soon after the first factory is finished. And he's going to be going mech. So that's pretty cool. There is of course the new variation. Well it's not really new. Uh, but it's kind of newer. Uh, sorry. Bought back one of the old SKT styles. Where you go for two factory goliath into bio. I don't know if that's what we're going to see here from Logan, but it would be a nice way of playing against Eriador. Now, Eriador has gone for his Hydra Den very, very quickly, so he is getting ready uh, for a possible, like, mech or vulture drop or wraith opening. Now, that's because that is quite popular on this map here. Now, second gas is coming up here. Looks like Eriador getting ready to take a third base already. Uh, now, the one thing to know about this map is every base outside of the main, the three naturals, one here, one here, and one here, they all have 3,400 gas. And all of the other bases only have 2,000. So, 2,000 gas is not very much. Looks like uh, Eriador hiding his drone away from the SCV that he knows has come to scout him so he can go and build this hatchery without it being spotted. Looks like hit him up. Wants to come back in here to try and scout for this. Uh, but is he going to be able to get there before the Hydra kills him? Looks like he is going to get back into the natural. Uh, but he should go down before he can get into the main. But does he see the third hatchery there? I don't think he did. I think he was just out of range. But he will see the creep so he'll know the hatchery there anyway. Queen's Nest is coming up already. This is a very, very fast Queen's Nest in this game. No Spire is being uh, constructed by Eriador. Looks like hit him up getting ready to defend against the Hydra Bust as well. Just to be sure, we've got three factories coming in. Nothing actually being built out of them. He got himself supply blocked a little bit there. Plus one attack is on the way. 
And things are looking like we're going to get a pretty cool macro game here, based on the way both these players are playing. Yeah, I was going to say one thing that Eridor could do which would help him a little bit is actually mining out all of these just to make sure his units don't get stuck. Uh, looks like he is going to glitch a drone over and take the other expansion as well. So Eridor is going up to a very quick 4 base here. Now hit him up did scan the main. Uh, he will have seen the tech. He'll know the queen's nest is here. Now one thing that Eriador does like going for is actually this queen hydra bust against mech openings. Especially 1-1-1. It can be incredibly strong uh, because essentially you have very few tanks. Now the tanks are really... What deal with the uh, what deal with mass Hydra? Uh, when you have mass Goliath, obviously that's going to be a problem. He's not going to be building tanks yet. He's going to go Goliath as you always do. Looks like he is going to switch up now. I know his queens are coming, but imagine if he had tanks building before this. Like when the queens come in, he would have maybe six, seven, eight tanks. It wouldn't do too much. But now when you have this many queens already. And they're building up energy. It does take a very long time to get the 150 required for Broodling. Just think about how quickly this energy is going to tank and tick up. And how slow tanks are building. That means you leave yourself open to a very strong timing attack from Queens. They come in with a huge influx of Hydras. We've already got 37 drones across the three bases. The fourth base is finishing up as well. And that gets really problematic for the Terran, because Terran is going to be able to go for a third base. It shouldn't be too hard to hold on to, but you've got limited tanks. You can only defend one of the bases at one time with the number of tanks you have. And if you split up, the queens just kill you. Now, we did have a scan going down. Does he see the queens? I don't think he saw them. The queens hiding in a pretty good position. They're about almost ready to go for a broodling. We should have the broodling upgrade finished already, if it's not already done. Looks like Eriador gonna drone up more. It seems crazy to think we're in a position in this TVZ where the Zerg is actually ahead in workers. Now hit him up is in the same team, of course, as the Ghost King. Now we have some scans going down, which do see a little clump of hydras building up over there on the right hand side. This is going to make it a little bit harder to expand out this way. Uh, but the good thing for hit em up is there's no mining going down on these. So it's going to be a while before um, Ariadol can get through. We've actually got Overlord Drop coming in. Is this Drop? This is Drop, isn't it? I always struggle with the Overlord icons. I don't know why. That might be speed, actually. Yeah, it's Overlord Speed. Ah, Belly Fat is drop. Okay, it is drop. Right, okay. And then the tendrils are like, is it Overlord Vision or something? That no one ever gets? Because it's just awful. <laughs> now obviously, uh, Speed Overlords can go in for faster drops, so it's pretty good. Now we've got a lot of Goliaths coming in here, but look at the few number of tanks. Now... This is a ton of queens. There's actually, oh, sorry, it's a ton of units. There's only two tanks. One broodling, two broodling. And all of a sudden, this army that looked a little bit fearful before is melting to these Hydralisks. Plus one attack is done for both players. But Eriador getting the perfect engagement so far. He's focusing down these Goliaths so, so well as well. Look at this. The Goliaths just don't even stand a chance, and if we look at the supplies after that engagement, Eridor is going to find himself ahead in supply. They're even on work account, so he has more army. Now, he only used two Broodlings there, so he still has another four remaining. Look at this, hit him up. He's only got one factory building siege tanks. He's only just now getting his starport, so plus two is very heavily delayed, and he's only on two base. Eriador is killing it this game so far. Now, the third base is coming up. But as hit him up, you needed that push to do damage. And right then, it didn't. Eriador is going to come in with a ton of units here. And he can actually end the game here. Now, there is the Deeper, which will help wall this area off a little bit. 
But this is four queens with broodling. There's only one tank. Looks like Eriador going around for a little bit of covert ops here with the queen trying to find a way onto that tank. He actually parasites two of the goliaths instead. And that's a pretty good use of energy because if you don't know this about parasite, it does give you vision over the army. Now when you have vision, it means you can clone queens a little bit faster. And it looks like this CT is flying out there. If he, oh, unfortunately for Eriador, he moved all his hydras back. But I was going to say if he didn't, that would have been an incredible opportunity to go for a ensnare. Uh, not ensnare, sorry. Infest. XE, XE, XE saying so medic marines are essentially in TVZ. That is not necessarily true. Now, oh, a queen going in. Does get taken down. A full energy queen. That's a little... Oh, he loses two of them. That's actually a massive deal. Yeah, the thing is... Oh, looks like Eridor coming through the middle of the map. There's actually not that many units here to defend. Just three tanks with a bunker as well. Helping out so, so much. Eridor is going to be forced to pull back for now. And now his Hydralists are stuck in the middle of the map. Yeah, the thing is, people sleep on Ensnare. Like, Ensnare reduces the attack speed of a Marine so much that when you when you stim, it's firing at normal speed. It's just so, so good. Now the Queen's coming in here yet again. Let's have a look and see if he can get some of those. Oh, he loses another Queen. Looks like he wants the Infest. He's going to go for the Command Center, it looks like, but not enough energy. Here comes one Broodling on one of those tanks, another Broodling on another one. And oh my god, he's going to go for the infest. He gets the infest. Oh no. Hit him up. Getting BM'd here a little bit. Infest is a very good spell. It does deny the command center, but uh, apparently Koreans don't use it because it's BM. Now, he really wanted to repair that. And unfortunately, it just isn't going to work. Now, the infested command center is going to go down. And there is a dropship going up here to the top left-hand side. Now, this base... Is very heavily undefended. Now, if he just had a single tank, this would be amazing. Now, looks like Hit'em Up is going to be able to break out this base. Both teams, despite the fact that uh, Hit'em Up lost his command center there, are very similar in supplies right now. Now, the drop on the high ground can hit the mineral lines, but it would be better with obviously a tank. We've got a queen coming up here to uh, Broodlink, one of those Goliaths. Makes this a little bit easier for the Hydras on the low ground to deal with. Although this uh, this Goliath is in a very good position. It's also getting incredibly lucky. Now looks like we are going to have a push coming in here from Hit Him Up. He wants to try and put some counter pressure on. He knows a lot of the Hydras did go down. And he is going to be able to siege some tanks in the main of his opponent. If he can get the Hydra in here, it would be pretty good. But the Queen's coming in. Let's have a look. See how many Broodlings he has. One, two, straight away. Three. Can he get a fourth? It looks like he's going to kill it anyway. And there we go. Four. And Hit Him Up's push into the main is suddenly looking a lot worse. All of a sudden, he's gone from five, six tanks to zero. He's got two coming in as reinforcements with, with, with Swarm here to help out. He should be okay. Uh, but let's have a look, see if this is going to work out here. Hit him up, still managing to push forward. The Lurkers under the Dark Swarm, able to get both of these tanks. Three tanks coming in to deal with this. Uh, but looks like the glass getting cleaned up once again. And if we go back and have a look at the supplies, Eriador ahead in supply again. Hit him up is up 30 workers. There is still a Goliath on this high ground, but it can do no damage to the worker line. Although there isn't actually that many uh, drones here. Looks like drone getting ready to expand down to the bottom left. He has the top right hand high ground base, which the Goliath does not know about. But this is, uh, this is pretty damn good here for Eridor so far. He's had such great value from the Queens. There's only been a couple of Queens he's lost without being able uh, to go for... Without being able to go for Broodling, which is just insane. Now, there's no plus two attack here, I don't think. 
yeah, hit him up has actually fallen behind in upgrades. Now, upgrades in TBZ are very important for Bio, but they're also incredibly important for Mech as well. And look at this! He's coming in behind again with the Queen. Gets a Parasite off of one of the, uh, one of the tanks. He sees the dropship and his Queen gets away. And the dropship goes down as well. This is uh, not looking good so far for Hit'em Up, but Hit'em Up is able to get a fourth base. Looks like we did have another set of Queen and... Oh, it's going to be a couple of Broodlings here. There we go. One, two. Gets the Queens away as well, although this Queen's going to die. And he cleans it up with Hydras once again. Now it looks like we're going to have three tanks head over here to the top left-hand base. Now this is a good place to push, but he needs to worry about the queens. The more queens there are, the more energy there is. The more energy there is, the more dead tanks there are. And just look at how many queens there are. There's 12 queens. 12 queens. And Ariador getting ready to come in for another infest. This, this base is basically mined out other than the gas, but this is still such an important area to control. Looks like we're going to have a base trade coming over here. The uh, Hydra is getting in. There's no queen here to infest, so he is going to probably kill this command center. Although he should leave it. Leave it and infest. Don't do it. Oh, but here we go. Looks like we're going to have lurkers coming in in swarm, which is going to make this even harder. The tanks are going to all go down here. The command center falls without another infest. The queens get here, but there's no reason for them to come here whatsoever. He is just going to brood them anyway, just to make sure. And this is uh, pretty damn good. Hit him up, doing an incredible job. Uh, sorry, Ariador doing an incredible job. Hit him up, doing his best as well. But unfortunately, his best is just not working out here against Ariador. Ariador has got units everywhere. He's got everything that's uh, going on here. And VT game just confused me in chat, but... Look at this, so many kills coming down from these lurkers. The swarm there for good measure, in, sp in spite of the fact there's absolutely nothing that they need to be there for. We're going to have yet another Parasite coming in here. That does mean he still ha he got Queen Energy, so he has enough. I think this is Queen Energy, right? Uh, yeah, he's still got enough for Broodling, so there we go. Oh, uh, VT game thought I was actually playing. <laughs> now, vultures are coming out. Now, vultures, I know someone said before, they're not a good complement to the army. They're a really good complement because you put mines everywhere. You make it very difficult for the defilers and the hydras to run around on their own. We've got a dropship coming down here. Interestingly, not dropping on the high ground. Not going for ghosts or anything like that. But this is a good location to drop. Going to be hard to clean this up. Vulture is going to come in here as well to help clean this up. Looks like we've got some uh, cloning going on with that queen energy. But look at this. Hydralis coming in from the other location. There's not many tanks here whatsoever. So many tanks are left in the main. And oh no, a command center is going to go down again. Oh, please infest this one. You've got to come in and infest this. But let's zoom out. Let's have a look at the devastation that's going to be coming in here from these broodlings. One, two, three, four, and five. All the tanks going down. All of the bases going down here. And hit them up. Has been completely and utterly picked apart here from every single angle. There's still some hydras cleaning up over there. Uh, looks like hit him up, got nervous, and tried to do play, change what he was doing. Uh, but that was a really, really nice played game. A really fun game as well. And I'm glad we got to see it. I think that probably takes the record for the amount of... Uh, the amount of... What am I going to say? Uh, the amount of broodlings in a single game and the amount of queens in a single game. That's probably the highest in STPL history, which is kind of cool. Now, we are going to be heading into game number three. It's going to be a TVP between Red, Blue, Green, and Hades. When we get back after this short break, and it's very dark now, so I should probably turn the light on. <laughs> Didn't realize it was this dark.
STP Outdoors. Bio TVP. Wow! You got it. STP Outdoors. Mass Scouts, no problem. Broadcast three nights a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 2100 CEST. Fantastic casting, fantastic production, fantastic prizes. Only here on the STPL. Did you know Reavers could be this radical? How did these lings even get here? All I know is that's one dead base. STP Outdoors! Wraiths, Valkyries, Carriers, and Corsairs. Forget about it. You won't see that anywhere else. STP Outdoors! STP Outdoors! STP Outdoors! STP Outdoors! STP Outdoors! DT's doing game ending damage? Name a more iconic duo. We've even got carriers in PvZ. How amazing! A global team league on the scale you've never seen before. Don't see this in BWC, STPL does! All that and more. Only on this amazing 64-bit STPL. What BWCL don't. Impressed? I know I am. Why not support us on the link below? Patreon.com forward slash kicks. But act fast. It's a limited offer. Okay guys, welcome back. We're going to be heading into game three between Red and Ash. So far we've had two pretty long and pretty cool games. I think the PvP to begin with was a little bit slow, but that TVZ was definitely fun. And we had a lot of queens being used, which is always good to see. Now these two players haven't played too many games in the STPL, so I'm not going to go for a deep dive into their stats or anything. I'll explain that a little bit as we get into the game, but... We're going to be heading into Andromeda. Now, we've only had one TVP here so far. It was a really fun game that Tech should have won, uh, but he got caught off guard by a hidden base, and that ended up being a little bit unfortunate. But that was a really long and cool game. Hopefully, we'll a long, cool game here as we get into game number three. It's Red, Blue, Green versus Hades. That's interesting. I thought Desarque was playing. Well, that's good, because Hades is a lot easier to say. So, if you guys give me one second, we'll get into the game, and then we'll just quickly do everything again. Okay, starting us off down here in the bottom right-hand corner in the red, fighting for red. It's red, blue, green. And down here, fighting in the blue for Ash. It's Hades. Okay, what colors are they outside? Okay, it's yellow versus orange. I will stick with uh, red and blue. But then maybe if I do red and blue, it's a little bit unfair, given it's kind of biased towards red, blue, green. I don't know. Also... Red, blue, green. If your name is not blue, green, 
then you're not wearing your clan tag, which means uh, you're, you're not doing the right thing. Your blue-green. Your red, blue-green. There we go. It's RGB. Okay, we'll make that your... <laughs> make that your username, then. Red RGB. There we go. Problem solved. Now, it is going to be a TVP. Now, it looks like uh, RGB is going to be... Going for a little bit of a wall in here. A okay, fairly standard opening coming in from both players so far. Looks like we should have Blue Green pulling off of gas any second, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So he is going to go for an expansion. We've got Hades just macroing up as well, not going for two gates and putting any pressure on either. And most likely going to go for his own expansion, probably around 23 to 28 supply. So. Now the first factory is coming in here. There isn't an expansion command center coming up yet. That'll be coming up around 21 supply. Uh, but it looks like Blue Green is actually skipping out on SCVs for just a second there. A little bit of a mistake. I think he was a little bit busy microing his SCV away from the base. Now we've got both teams actually tied up one to one, which is pretty good. It means we have a chance of going into an ace match regardless of the outcome of this game. We've got the bunker coming up first, which means we're gonna see a relatively fast and safe expansion from Blue Green Hades. Back at home, still not adding on any tech and saving up for Nexus, so. And as I say that, he goes DTs. There we go. <laughs> so we're gonna have a DT build coming in from Hades, looking to end the game early. I thought he was saving up for a Nexus. Maybe he was and maybe decided against it. But there'll be a Templar Archives coming up shortly after this. Now, will Blue Green go for quick enough detection? Is it going to be an Engineering Bay? Is it going to be an Academy? That is what we'll have to wait and find out. Because if he doesn't go for any detection whatsoever, this is going to be a very short-lived go- It's gone. It's gone. There's no Cybercore anymore. <laughs> it was fake DT. Hades is faking me out entirely. He actually decided to quit it and go for a Nexus. There we go. I don't know why he would go for that when the SCV was nowhere near the base, but maybe he showed it. No, because I think he built it when there was no SCV in the base. I guess the SCV coming back made him cancel it, but that just means everything is later. Like, if everything is late, nothing is right. It's better to just do one, like, if your Citadel is late anyway, you should just finish it, because your Nexus is going to be so late regardless that you may as well at least get the Citadel and get, oh my goodness, oh no, this tank is going to go down. Looks like the SCVs have it. Oh my god, he saves the tank. Oh, is he going to be able to repair the tank? He needs more repair. Yes, he is. And those three Dragoons are not going to do what they needed to do. All they had to do was run past the bunker. And then they stood there for a while. That is not a position Hades wants to be in. He is going up to a third Nexus, which means he is going to be expanding to a third base with one unit. That is not what you want. There's two more gateways coming up in the main base, but still... Hit him up. Uh, sorry, Blue Green is going to be feeling pretty amazing after that. That is very possibly the best thing that could possibly happen as a Terran player. Three Dragoons for free. And he's going for Deep Six. He's going for Bio behind this. Oh my goodness, this is going to be devastating. The late Citadel means Templar Archives is incredibly late. There'll be no Storm to deal with this. And more importantly, there'll be no Reavers. This is going to be a bio play. We've got red, blue, or RBG scanning. He sees a citadel. Isn't even done. If he just builds another three barracks and goes, this is going to be an incredible game. 
There is still no Robo, so there's no Observer, there's no way of scouting this coming. And Blue-Green, he has the power here to end the game with a very specific timing attack. And it's so hard to make this work normally, but when your opponent gives you three Dragoons for free, when they delay the attack this long, and when they go for the fastest third base imaginable, this is a good build to counter it. And uh, bio TVP, just like the ad said, exactly. No false advertising in the STPL. STPL doesn't do false advertising. We have the coolest games. We have the uh, the coolest builds. We have the coolest units. We had queens. We've had ghosts. We've had dark archons. We even in season one we had a PVP where it was carriers versus carriers against mass archons. There we go. Now looks like Red, Blue, Green gonna get ready to push. He needs to push now though, because the longer this game goes on, the more likely there is that there'll be... I was gonna say that a, a Templar Archives will be up, but he's not building anything. And this is the first that Hades is gonna see of this. I don't think... Yeah, he does. He sees the medics as well. He knows this is bio. But there we go. Let's see if Blue, Green can go do this. There's still only three barracks going up to a fourth. Not going for a deep six, this is kind of like a shallow three, I guess. It's not quite shallow two, which is a really fun build, but... I mean, this is too many tanks. It's too many tanks and too much bio. I don't know how on earth you're going to deal with this as Protoss. What are you going to do? Run your run your Dragoons into the tank fire? Run the Zealot into the bio? It ain't going to work! Looks like Blue Green in a very, very good position. Looks like he, Hades is trying to do his best to hold on, but the bio's... The bio's power is in its DPS. The units go die very, very quickly. Guess what? This Nexus is going to go down. Then he takes a position here and he kills the other Nexus as well. And Hades is going to be forced to tap out this game. Looks like the Templar Archives is still not on the way. There is still no form of splash damage. And splash damage is pretty much the main reason the bio doesn't work normally in TVP. The tanks are even in a position to do this from here, but you can actually just stim up the ramp. This is going to be game over. Looks like there's a lot of zealots coming in here, but look how quick they melt against this many marines. I mean, okay, this is looking a little bit better. He is possibly going to be able to break through. Nope, still not going to be able to break through. The tanks do the damage to the marines and the Protoss in this position, as Lucky New points out as well. But honestly, Reva or High Templar would be better in this situation, because Storm and Reavers melt everything. But this is it. This is going to be game over. Bio TVP. I don't think I've seen Bio lose in TVP in the SDPL yet. Higher. Uh, who did he beat? He beat Mighty, I think it was, in the Season 2 Finals. Famasi beat Yeti, I think it was, back in Season 1. And now we've got Blue Green taking down Hades. And look at where all the buildings are. They're in a position to be Siege down. There's a bunker on the high ground as well, just for good measure. I mean, this game is done. Now, he doesn't even need units in that bunker. GG, Hades taps out. And Blue Green wins game number three and takes the series two to one in favor of Red. So, I didn't turn on the light, as you can tell, uh, but I'll do that during the proper break. We'll go for a quick break, and when we get back, we'll head into game number three, or game number four, sorry, and we'll see if Ash can keep the hope alive of Report staying three. in this series, or are we going to go in to an ace match if they win, or are we just going to have a red win? Let's find out. Thank you, Oya, for the raid. Uh, we're just going for a very quick break, so don't go anywhere. Toss a coin to your content creators, O oh, Valley of Plenty, O oh, Valley of Plenty, oh. 
Toss a coin to your content creators, a friend of humanity. Okay guys, welcome back. We're going to be heading into game number four. Now it's going to be Talent and Patank. Both of them haven't played too many games in the SUPL, so we'll skip the stats. But so far on this map, we've had three PVZs with Protoss winning all three of them. Can Talent continue on this trend, win the fourth game in a row for Protoss here? Or is Patank going to keep the dream alive for Ash and take us into an ace match? Let's find out. Okay, the game has begun and starting us off in the top left-hand corner, we've got Talon fighting for red. And over here in the bottom right-hand corner we have Ptak fighting for Ash. Now we've actually got good cheerfuls for both of these players, but given the fact that Ash are down in the series, and they do need a little bit of moral support. I'm going to use the one that Lucky Noob made for Patak. It's really, really good. And everyone deserves to see this because honestly, it's just strange. Patak apparently means duck in uh, Croatian, I believe. So this is a pun on his name. <laughs> it just looks funny, so I like it. But let's see if Patak can hold this back and give the win. To Ash or Patak is bird in Polish. My bad. I have absolutely no idea. I only know English and Japanese. Anything other than that, and I've got no clue whatsoever. I maybe know like five words in German, and that's it. Oh, I also know like a couple of words in Russian, but and a couple of swear words in Polish as well. But yeah, I am a, I am a big idiot. Yeah, TL is apparently saying he's Croatian and he should have spelt it Patak, P-A-T-A-K, according to uh, Team Liquid, Liquipedia, but... Now we've got a two-gate build coming in here from Talon, so Talon is looking to get a very quick victory here over Patak. Patak is only just now getting the spawning pool, and the stars are aligning here for our red player, he has a lot of talent. Building two gateways is a useful talent to he have. And is he going to be able to make this work? Now the lings are going to be so, so late. He got the first scout as well. And he's building in the main base. Now Patak does see this coming here. No, it's 1-1. One, one. Uh, 2-1, sorry. Because uh, Eriador beat hit him up. Dreamer beat LML. Wait. LML won, didn't he? No, no, LML lost. LML lost. You confused me there. <laughs> but the first two Zealots are going to be on the way here. And this is when things get really bad for our Zerg players here. Because essentially, if you've got two Zealots running towards your base when there's one already here, we've already got two creep colonies trying to morph in. One of these should be able to be cancelled before it gets made into a sunken. Uh, but basically, if you don't know this, when the sunken finishes, it loses 100 health. Because the sunken only has 300 health compared to the 400 of the initial creep colony. So if you can get it down to 100, it spawns with one health and you just insta-kill it. But 
I mean, this is three Zealots. Attack going to be trying to hold on here with the very best of his ability. This is a lot of Zerglings. And it is two... Uh, it is two Sunkens, which will help out. Oh my god, we've even got probes being pulled. The boys have been pulled here. He wants to end the game and he wants to end it quick. Let's see if this is going to work. The probes are going to add a lot of blocking power to this engagement. They can also shoot over the top of the zealots. And uh, this is pretty much the perfect situation. Patak did not see the probes. So he's not going to pull his own drones. This is an all-in here by talent he's still got a lot of mining back at home though so it's not super all in but he needs to go he's running out of time if a third sunken comes in here it's going to be difficult now there is going to be eight zealots no seven zealots and here they go the probes coming in as well they'll help wall away some of these uh, lings which will help the zealots kill the sunkens a little bit quicker and it looks like this just could be too much. Patak is falling. A lot of his units are going down. The probe's helping out so, so much against these lings. And the sunken. I mean, this sunken has actually got a lot of kills. Let's check the health of these zealots. Pretty low, but I don't think it's going to matter. He is going to be able to get the natural hatchery here. And there's just no follow-up here for Patak. He's got no lair. He's building a sunken in his main. And if you're building a sunken in your main, that's, that's when you know things are harsh. But I think this is a little bit too much. Talent showing off his talent here. Going for this very well timed out. Very well planned out. Uh, two gateway rush on this map. And it's definitely worked out from here. Hatchery is going to go down. There's absolutely nothing the Patak has in his main that's going to help him. He's down to 16 supply against 42. He's trying to go for another creep colony, but unfortunately for him, I mean, Talon's just going to run into his base. Like, he doesn't care. What are you going to do? Sit here and say, well, okay, this is a little bit weird. You should just go for the main. But he's just going to guarantee that he's going to win. Like, he's killing all the buildings because he'll have to kill them anyway. And it's pretty much game over. Patak trying to hold on. He wants to keep the dream alive here for Ash, but... Unfortunately, Red are going to take the edge in this head-to-head. -head. Zealot's killing the Sunkens. All the lings go down. GG. Patak taps out. And Talon is going to take the series for Red. 3-1. Now let's have a look at the results screen. Then we're going to go for another quick break as we get ready for the next series. I also need to get a couple of drinks and stuff like that. Uh, because up next we've got Netwars and EF. Thank you, 80s, for the raid, man. Hopefully your stream went okay. Uh, but the score for the first series of today, Dreamer taking down LML. Eriador taking down Hit'em Up with fantastic queen usage. Blue Green taking down Hades with a very quick, very well executed bio push in TVP. And then we had a very straightforward uh, PVZ with two gateway against one hatchery, uh, two hatch opening. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Talent winning, winning the series for red. It's three to one. Just a massive shout out as well to our sponsors, Liquipedia, Matarino, and Esport Fund for being such amazing sponsors to the STPL. Uh, we're currently at $1,300, I think it is, out of our $2,000 prize pool goal. If we can reach that goal, uh, I believe one of, or our, one of our sponsors will be doubling their contribution in the next season. There's also